All right. And uh, so thank you everyone for taking the time to join today. Uh, this talking head, my name is Adrian Schmoker. I'm a senior fellow at the GovLab. Um, also recently a public servant with the city of New York as the deputy chief analytics officer and a director with the New York City Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. I'm really pleased to be joined here today by a few colleagues and a guest speaker. Uh, Stefan Verholst is our co-founder and the chief research and development officer of the GovLab at NYU Tandon. Andrew Young, our knowledge director at the GovLab. Andrew Zeronik, a research fellow. And Chris Villanueva Libuno, mentor with the City Incubator, executive director of Smart CT, director of ICT and cyber relations with US Asian uh, Youth Council. And I do want to let everyone know that today's session will be recorded. The recording will be up on the City Incubator website as a resource to those who weren't able to join the event live today. Uh, we do ask that you please stay on mute for the duration of the event. We will have questions at the end. Feel free to add questions into the Zoom chat throughout the event. Um, if you'd like to make sure you don't forget your question uh, by the time we get through today's presentation. And so taking us through the agenda for today. So we'll start out with an overview of the GovLab and the Open Data Policy Lab, and then run through a variety of details about the Open Data Policy Lab's city incubator program. Why cities, what is a data innovation, program details, criteria for applicants, the application process, Q&A. And we'll also, um, in the midst of all of this, also have a presentation by Chris uh, to share a bit more about uh, data innovation. And so with that, it's my pleasure to hand this over to Stefan to share more about the Go Club. Great, thanks so much, uh, Adrian, for that. And welcome everyone, and thanks for joining. I realize uh, this is August in some parts of the hemisphere that uh, means uh, vacation. And so I realized that uh, um, uh, this might uh, be not an ideal time for some, but at least thanks for joining those that could make the time to um, learn more about the City Incubator. And as Adrian was referring to, the City Incubator is an initiative from the GovLab. And the GovLab is an action research center based here in New York. We are part of the Engineering School of New York University. And our mission is to really transform the way we go about governing i.e. how we go about making decisions in the public interest, leveraging technology and science. And typically that has meant that we have focused on two important assets in society, and we have focused on how do we leverage those assets in new ways in order to improve the way we go about making decisions. Those assets typically involve, on the one hand, people. So we do a lot of work around new ways of engaging citizens new ways to tap into their wisdom and new ways to crowdsource new ideas and new insights in order to improve the way we go about making decisions. And the other asset, which is the asset that we focus on today, is of course data. And here we've done a lot of work on how do we unlock data in order to inform decision-making, transform the way we go about governing. And that's where within that context where we have created the Open Data Policy Lab together with Microsoft and other partners in order to accelerate the way we go about reusing data in the public interest. And I give now the floor to Andrew Young, who is our Knowledge Director, who will give a little bit more detail behind the Open Data Policy Lab, where, of course, the City Incubator resides. Over to you, Andrew. Thanks so much, Stefan. So as Stefan mentioned, the Open Data Policy Lab is an initiative from the GovLab uh, with support from Microsoft and the engagement of a number of other partners. And the Open Data Policy Lab works to accelerate the responsible reuse of data by lowering barriers and building a center of expertise available to all stakeholders involved in democratizing access to data. And we do this through four key lines of activity. The first is analysis 
including ongoing work on how public and private sector entities are harnessing an emerging third wave of open data, which Adrian will discuss more in a moment. The second line is guidance, uh, including our Data Stewards Academy training program that trains leaders across sectors in the design and implementation of a data reuse strategy that can create societal and institutional value. The third key line of activity is around community, uh, including through our facilitation of a network of data stewards. And these are leaders across sectors who drive systematic, sustainable, and responsible cross-sector data collaboration and reuse. And then finally, we have a pillar around action, such as the implementation of real-world data collaboratives that can match the demand for data among those working in the public interest with its supply held across sectors. So that's what we do at the, the Policy Lab. And one of the newest initiatives and one that we're very excited about is the City Incubator Program that I will hand it over to Adrian to discuss in more detail. Thank you, Stefan and Andrew. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to, to share more about the GovLab and the Open Data Policy Lab. And so to share more about the City Incubator, the focus of today's informational webinar, we first have to start with the question of why cities? I think as many of us know, our cities house a large portion of the world's population, actually more than half the world's population. And this is only expected to grow over time to 68% by 2050, if not more. And as we saw with COVID-19, the data infrastructure of our local governments is paramount. So because of these two reasons, we really believe that by investing in the individuals and teams in city governments that are building new data innovations, that we can really better equip our cities for the future. And so what exactly do we mean by data innovation? So data innovation is a broad term that we're using to consider a variety of different data projects. You can see four different categories listed here on the slide publishing with purpose, advancing open data, fostering partnerships and data collaboration, prioritizing data responsibility and data rights. And this really comes from and builds out of the third wave of open data that both Stefan and Andrew have mentioned uh, a moment ago. So as you can see, data innovation is intentionally this broad term um, for really thinking about how to build new infrastructure with data, prioritizing data as an asset. And so with this, uh, to provide a, a bit more of a concrete example, I'm really pleased to introduce Chris Villanueva Libuano, a mentor with the City Incubator, Executive Director of Smart CT, Director of ICT and Cyber Relations U.S. Asian um, Youth Council to share a little bit about her work and data innovation. So with this, um, I'll stop sharing my screen and Chris, you're welcome to, to take the reins and uh, share a little bit with us. Thanks, Adrian. Let me share my screen. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see my screen. This is not really the title of my presentation, but I will use a presentation that I've used um, in one of my talks. So basically uh, what I will talk about in general is data innovation and really sustaining it. Just how can we really sustain our efforts in terms of data innovation? So again, you know, I would like to, before we get all started, just a shout out to Adrian, Andrew, uh, Stefan, Andrew, for and the GovLab for organizing this event and for this uh, for this particular project, which is really in uh, in time. So again, I am Chris Libunao and I am coming in here with a lens from data stewardship, of course, urban planning, project management, and more than a decade of policy consultancies with government agencies and international government agencies. So about Smart City, I am the, since I am the executive director of Smart City, I'll give you a quick background about Smart City. So uh, Smart City, uh, we want to move the conversation from if you guys heard about smart cities, and I'm pretty sure that most of the cities already heard about it. We want to move the conversation of smart cities and basically digital transformation from away from being solely about high technologies and about application development towards one where the approach is more open, the approach is, uh, approach is more holistic, 
and of course, people and data centric. So our goal really is to create a future which is fair, free, open, and smart, where citizens and of course data, as, as Andrew mentioned earlier, are at the heart of smart and sustainable development. So we do this through our, our sustainable digital transformation approach. We offer you know, um, research development and of course advisory services. So hopefully in this, you know, five minute presentation or so, uh, or so, I first will share with you one of our projects in the Philippines. And hopefully by the end of my presentation, you will see data or data innovation from the perspective of communities who are still in the start of their, if in all of their data journey. So I will give, I will just go through this really quick. Okay. Here are the challenges that we try to address in the Philippines currently. So in the Philippines, we have, we, we really have a data problem or most developing countries, countries according, um, based in our research in 2020, we really have a data problem in terms of management and in terms of sharing, especially in the city level. So before COVID-19, uh, there are or there were a lot of plans and projects that already collect data um, for our cities in the country. Because of COVID-19, we now have a lot of apps, but we really don't know where it goes. We really don't know how it, it's managed. So to give you a quick um, um, overview on what's happening on the, on the city level in the country, there's no uh, city open data portal. Um, the data management is all, on, is all from the national level. So another problem that most cities uh, in Africa or in, in Asia Pacific uh, have have in in terms of data is that uh, our our usual problem in terms of the underdeveloped countries. So I will show you here some of the problems that we experience um, in the communities that perhaps your communities or your cities experience as well. So on top of the lack of city level data, we do have poor access to broadband internet. We do have electric challenges. And of course, the lack of digital and data skills um, in the city level and in the community. So how do we address this? I will share with you our project in Smart City and in the one of the communities in the Philippines. So in Smart City, we are tackling this problem in a way that perhaps it's not as sexy as, you know, coming from the Smart City space. It's, it's not as sexy as um, software development. It's not as sexy as, you know, app development and such. So our first approach is the countryside development. So unlike, you know, the developed countries, the high-income countries, I guess, the, we, if you, um, um, to Put it bluntly. Uh, uh, bluntly, we cannot really grasp, you know, AI or IoT or big data if you know the stomach of the of the of the community is aching from hunger, right? So, of course, I am exaggerating here to make a point. So, a smart city we really believe is should be underpinned with a good basic service provision. You know, um, the the city should know um, what's the basic service provision that they want to provide. How can it be reliable and how can the data be used to really provide this particular um, basic services? So another approach that we have is the open data level, um, open data in the local level. So as mentioned earlier, there currently in, in most developing countries in Asia and Africa, there's no, there's no open data in terms of the city level. So the first thing that we do is really to evangelize uh, open data in the city level. So we do have freedom of information. Freedom of information is nice. You request for, for, for the information and you wait for the government to reply. But we really believe that open data is great. So what we do 
um, in the Philippines is really to um, push for policies on in the local level to make their public data open and machine readable by default. So the next approach that we have is data inventory and of course the um, the collaboration in terms of the data portal. So as mentioned earlier, if we check the national portal um, in the Philippines, the figures on transportation land use are hardly on the city level. So most LGUs or most um, cities and local governments really doesn't have uh, digitalized data sets to put in to the ready-made portal. So what we do um, first in, in the Philippines is do a data inventory, see the data, the data assets that they, they have or if they need you know, for it to be digitalized and collaborate with them in terms of building um, a data portal. And of course, you know, data literacy and data fellowship. So we believe that we cannot you know, build a portal, you know, publish the data sets for transportation at the city level and expect people to use it or people will come, right? So for us, the long-term strategy really is boosting data literacy um, of the community and of the public sector as well. So we do have trainings on the organizational level and of course the um, individual level as well. So yeah, so currently in the partner city that we have in the Philippines, we are about to launch our first open data fellowship this August with um, 16 fellows in the cohort. So we really believe that data literacy is really democratizing data science. So this skill is, is for everyone. Um, it is not you know a math or a science skill, but we really believe that data literacy is a life skill in the, dig the, in the digital era. So this project um, is our, you know, um, what they call this, a prime project in terms of helping the local governments open their data and really collaborating with the community on the ground. So just to wrap up, of course, uh, I guess uh, what I will, I, what I want to really put emphasis here is that we can always start any data innovation initiatives. It's, it's easy to start, but there are a lot of questions or a lot of opportunities as well in terms of how can we really sustain our data innovation efforts beyond this pandemic, beyond this project, or beyond this, this um, cohort that you're applying for. So how can we really sustain this effort beyond the leadership? So there are a lot that can be done. And again, we really believe that to address the complex and this dynamic issue in terms of our dynamic um, transformation in terms of data innovation, we have to shift gears um, through data, you know, opening the data through innovation and of course, through collaborations. And with that, uh, I guess uh, the, that's it for my presentation. I invite you to join our movement in Smart City in creating a free, open, and smart, sustainable future. So if you want to know more about you know, our sustainable approach in terms of digital transformation and data innovation, we're always um, on the look for like-minded partners so who can support our efforts. So feel free to connect with me. And again, I'm Chris. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate you sharing uh, your work and uh, it's so many different examples of what data innovation can be and be translated into, whether it's an executive order or a fellowship. And really, really enjoyed your uh, emphasis on the sustainability component because that is actually key to what we're, we're looking for in data innovations that are submitted is for it not to be a one-time analytics project or a one-time hackathon, which can be really useful for inspiring and showing the power of data. But we're really looking for um, data innovations that are you know, meant to be here to last, to transform city governments over time. Uh, so thank you so much for that, Chris. Uh, really appreciate it. And so uh, kind of moving into a little bit of you know, what the city incubator will be providing applicants 
um, and those eventual 10 program participants that we're selecting. Um, so I do want to, kind of continuing to thank Chris, also want to highlight that she's uh, gracefully uh, agreed to be a mentor for the City Incubator Program. Uh, this is another list of some of the other uh, mentors who are a part of the City Incubator Program as well. Uh, program participants will have access to um, this group of this network of experts really to tap into when you have a question or need help. The program staff will be working with you to identify of your needs and challenges and help match you for one-on-one -on -one conversations with mentors like Chris as necessary over the course of the six month program. Other components of, of resources available to program participants include an international community of peers. So the 10 individuals from city governments around the world um, are meant to be another level of resource um, supporters um, for you as you're looking to launch your data innovation. Uh, the city incubator program is meant also to provide visibility. You know, while our, our primary aim is to really help program participants take their data innovations from idea to implementation. There is also this component, especially within the, the values and tenets of the open data policy lab and the third wave of open data to make as much uh, transparent and visible to the public as possible. Understanding that with data, we need to be extremely mindful of privacy, of confidentiality, um, but thinking about, well, how, what, what can we talk about? What can we share? Whether it's for our constituents or whether it's for an international um, network of peers to be able to learn from each other um, and really innovate and, and learn from one another. And so visibility, you know, those, there's a final presentation at the end of the six month program to leaders in the civic tech community. Um, and there'll also be, you know, a variety of communications. We're looking at a public panel. Um, and also, you know, including program participants in an ongoing blog series as well over the course of the six month program. We also have a variety of partners who've come on to, to join and support the city incubator program. As Stefan and Andrew mentioned, Microsoft is the primary partner helping to realize the open data policy lab and the city incubator, especially. We're also working with MasterCard City Possible, um, who are um, graciously providing apps, tools, and other services from their City Insights digital marketplace um, for program participants as well. And in terms of the, the programming, so you know, I just shared a little bit of you know, resources that are available to program participants, um, but the City Incubator team, um, you know, those of us here um, at the event today and others uh, from the GovLab as well, are really you know, putting a lot of time and effort into designing a program that is really going to help program participants to take their data innovation from idea to implementation. So this will include a data innovation boot camp. This will be in the first half of the program. In a lot of ways, really, you know, data entrepreneurship 101 will be uh, building off the principles of the third wave of open data covering uh, concepts such as you know, different foundations, agile principles, design process and research techniques, and of the basics of data governance, um, the core concepts around open data, also planning, how to identify resources required, whether that's technology, data, people, legal, as Chris highlighted, partnerships being a really key way for getting data innovations off the ground inclusive innovation, positioning, launch strategy, sustainability planning. These are all concepts we're looking to, to cover in the boot camp. We'll also then towards the second half of the program, uh, the six month program have a practitioner discussion series. So really bringing in guest speakers who've been practitioners or are current practitioners to share more about specific subjects. Maybe this is cybersecurity, fundraising, We'll also be looking to understand what the program participants themselves and their data innovations could really benefit from and bringing in practitioners to help support those needs. Um, access to what we're calling a bit of a brain trust. So we've mentioned the council of mentors, the peers, and then of course the program staff here uh, with the city incubator. And then, you know, one thing that, that I like to joke about, I studied public policy and, and have a degree, but I was never taught how to sell anything or <laughs> how to 
to anyone excited about my idea. And that's actually a really critical um, component to any form of entrepreneurship, but also particularly within the public sector. So we're excited to kind of bring in folks who, you know, really know how to perfect the pitch, as we'd say, and um, bring that training uh, to our program participants as well. And so a little bit more about the nuts and bolts of the city incubator. So one announcement that we have that we're making today at this event, and we'll, we'll be updating our site's materials accordingly, is that um, we opened applications in late July. We originally stated that the final application deadline would be August 31st, which is in about a week. Um, but after receiving uh, quite a few you know, inquiries and discussing further with the team, um, it, it sounds like for those of us who uh, you know, are experiencing August as a summer month and a vacation month, that having a slight extension might be helpful. And we also wanna make sure that those who've you know, only somewhat recently discovered the city incubator program opportunity have a bit more time to submit their applications as well. So the application deadline has now been extended to September 10th. Uh, we do still plan on making an announcement of program participants the week of September 13th and kicking off programming the last week of September with the program concluding in late March. And so one thing I do really want to emphasize uh, regarding this um, program is that it is global in nature. Um, the GovLab team is uh, headquartered in New York City, but does have uh, staff around the world. Uh, I myself am hailing from uh, Europe uh, today. And um, we're, we're very excited about the opportunity to learn from efforts happening in all parts of the world. So do just really want to emphasize that, you know, no matter where you're tuning in from or watching this recording from, uh, we are very eager and excited to accept applications um, from individuals working within city governments uh, around the world. And to share a little bit more about these individuals, and this is information that's available on the City Incubator website, just want to share a, a little bit and talk through this uh, quickly, is that we are requiring that uh, individuals applying and participating be employed by a municipal government. So not a consultant, not a vendor, but really a government employee. Um, this is a program, excuse me, to help launch data innovations, but really to help um, train uh, government employees with the tenants and ideas that come from the startup sector's incubator and accelerator programs, which was really the framework and template and inspiration in a lot of ways for the city incubator program as well. So there is a skills building component to this, uh, and we are committed to um, providing those resources to government employees. Other key elements here, and I, I won't read each of them, um, but we do need to, while this is a global program, we are requiring participants to feel very comfortable in English. All of the program will be taking place in English. And then we wanna make sure that there's a strong understanding of the commitment. So the program's time commitment we're estimating to be about seven hours of programming per month. That's both preparation and participation. And then another um, a set of time outside of those seven hours to really continue moving your data innovation forward. And then criteria for the data innovation submissions themselves. So you can see here, we're centering this around the idea that the data innovations are data powered, responsibility focused, impact driven, community centric, and future thinking. This future thinking component really building off of Chris's point around sustainability is not having a one-off project, but really helping build something that's going to provide insights for your city government ecosystem over time or a resource. Maybe it's a policy, maybe it's a process, maybe it's working with the public in a particular way. And your data innovation might be, you know, a start and stop type of event, but hopefully it's something that if you're testing it, you'd be willing to consider doing it again in the future and using it as a future mechanism to drive impact. And so to, to move into a bit more of the tactics of the application process, as mentioned, all final applications are now due by September 10th. This is a new date. Um, hopefully there'll be a collective sigh of relief that there's a little bit more time to cross T's and dot I's 
on your application submission. The different components of the application include a completed online application form. On the City Incubator website, you'll find a link to the application. It's a type form. We also have a PDF of the application questions that you can download in case you'd like to review and draft the questions in advance. The Data Innovation Canvas. So this is something I'll talk us through in just a moment. So I'll skip over that for now. And then the two other elements is that we do ask program participants in the application form to fully agree to participate for the full length of the six month program and acknowledge the time commitment that we just mentioned, the seven hours of programming and the additional um, amount of time to move your data innovation forward. We do also require the uploading and submission in the application form of a letter of commitment from your organization's leadership. So this could be a commissioner, a chief of staff, a deputy mayor. Uh, we realize that the org charts uh, within city governments uh, differ um, all around the world. So if you have any questions about, uh, you know, whether um, your manager or leadership within your agency or division or ministry is appropriate, feel free to reach out via email and we're happy to, to check in and confirm on that point. And now for the Data Innovation Canvas. So the Data Innovation Canvas is really meant to, while it is a part of the application process, is also meant to be um, a way of helping organize your thinking around a data innovation. So I mentioned that um, the City Incubator Program in a lot of ways was inspired by the startup ecosystem and these accelerator and incubator programs that invest in individuals who are looking to launch a company. Now, working in Paris is, is not the same as launching a company, and I don't think we should pretend that it is. You know, the mission of working in government is different than working for a for-profit organization and being profit maximizing. But that being said, there are some organizing frameworks that can be really useful for thinking about how to get something new off the ground. And so that is what the data innovation canvas is meant to be, is to really kind of take this large idea that you have, break it into pieces that help organize it and think through some of the implementation details. Now that being said, the data innovation canvas is meant to be a starting point. The city incubator's purpose is to help you take your idea from idea to implementation. So we're not expecting everything to be fully baked or everything to be fully figured out. The data innovation canvas is meant to be a tool. Um, hopefully you'll learn something by filling it out. And I'll walk you through a little bit of it um, here right now. So when you click on the data innovation canvas link on the city incubator website, um, this is one of the first slides you'll see. It'll give you instructions on how to actually download uh, the document sharing a little bit about the purpose of the data innovation canvas and then taking you to again an example of the final product now for your final submission you will need to fill out um, every slide from here un until the end of the data innovation canvas and so you can see these bulleted slides is almost your sandbox or brainstorm for your data innovation so first really asking, you know, what is your value proposition? Tell us, tell us what you're calling your data innovation. Tell us, you know, your, your theory of change, what problem you're looking to solve, what data you're looking to use. Think of this as almost kind of the executive summary with a real focus on the, the impact uh, that you'll be driving through your data innovation. The next slide is methods and deliverables. So what, what will the end result be here? What, what is the output? How might you be able to measure your data innovation? Cost and resources. What will it take to get this off the ground? What kind of people with which skills? Will they these be people within your department? Will they be volunteers? Will you need to hire someone? And also considering the policy and legal ecosystem you're working within. Are there specific local laws that might affect this work? Partners and stakeholders. So what universe of individuals and teams are required to get this off the ground? Considering the universe of what's available. So, you know, again, taking the mirroring from the kind of startup ecosystem, they might do a competitive analysis. This isn't exactly how we think about our work within public service. So, you know, what other initiatives might be complementary or sister initiatives to the work that you're looking to do? 
um, and who are partners maybe within or outside of your city government that you'd want to engage. And then risks. Is there a potential for harm through this initiative? And this isn't meant to say that the data and innovation shouldn't take place, but really pushing the thinking around what are some potential negative consequences that we might want to mitigate for or do more research around as we're looking to get this off the ground. And then lastly, open questions. Again, you know, your data innovation is not meant to be fully baked, fully figured out. Um, the program team, the mentors, the resources available um, through the City Incubator Program are meant to help you in your process of launching your data innovation. But we wanna know that you're thinking through kind of what it is you don't know. And so share that with us here. And then the final step in the data innovation canvas is to really kind of take the sandboxing of the bullet points you just filled out and then write them in a more narrative format, filling out the data innovation canvas in the same order as the slides. Once you've completed those slides in this final data innovation canvas, you'll upload that in your application on the City Incubator website. And so with that, um, this does conclude um, the uh, City Incubator informational uh, webinar and presentation. I encourage you, if you're working within a city government anywhere in the world, um, that you consider joining us for the six month journey from late September to uh, late March of 2022. And with that, uh, we'll go ahead and move into Q&A. And uh, Andrew, if, um, if you could help facilitate, that would be really fantastic. Thank you, everyone. So um, if you haven't already seen it, there's a Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. If you just want to type in um, any questions you have about anything we discussed here today, we'll answer as much as we can um, right now. We have one question in already. Um, hi, is it okay to send an existing MVP as an initiative to the program? The aim is to help it grow. Yes, uh, thank you so much. That's a great question. Uh, I would say the answer is yes. Uh, not everything that we're considering for the City Incubator Program has to be brand new and never tried before. Um, if you are looking to take an existing initiative to the next level or and grow it in a, a slight direction, uh, we're, we're definitely open to considering your proposal. Uh, the real aim is to make sure that the City Incubator Program and what we're offering is something that would really help you to drive impact in your work. Uh, that's a great question. Thank you. Very good. That's the only question we have right now. Um, I'm going to give it a, a few, a minute or so to see if there's anyone else who um, has any questions but anything that was discussed. Um, Seems like uh, um, Adrian, as always, you've been uh, super uh, helpful in explaining uh, how uh, things uh, work. So with that, I suggest uh, we close the webinar so that we give uh, um, time back to those that uh, participated uh, today. And if there are any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, Adrian, uh, thanks for sharing the last slide, which of course indicates how you can best reach us uh, either through um, adrian at the govlab.org to reach Adrian directly, or you can always send us also any question or suggestions uh, through the data stewards at the govlab.org. With that, I thank everyone to participate today, especially Chris, who uh, joined us uh, from the Philippines, uh, where it is 5 a.m. in the morning. So thanks for uh, being an early bird today. And uh, looking forward to all your applications. And uh, we are super, super excited about the City Incubator and the way we can help and especially work with all of you in order to accelerate the way 
data can inform cities and improve the lives of their residents. Thanks everyone and uh, talk and uh, uh, receive all your applications soon. Take care, bye-bye.